Welcome to worship, my friends. I am delighted to be with you here this week in this space. What a refreshing week it has been. The universe has washed itself with the wonders and beauty of rain here in San Diego. The sky looks bluer. The trees look greener. Ah, breathe in that fresh air that surrounds us as we gather for worship. Breathe in that which gives you energy and joy as we gather for worship. Breathe out that which no longer serves you, that which you no longer need. It is good to gather, to be together, to pray, to sing, to listen, and just be together as a community of faith. Let's be together. Let's be community here and now in this sacred space, wherever you are, whenever you are, in this moment of time. <sighs> Breathe in that which brings you joy and gratitude and closer to God and release all that is an impediment to that. Let's create our sacred space together. Let's join our voices together as we share in calling ourselves to this moment in this space of worship. Sisters and brothers, as we gather in the welcome of God's love, as we gather in the joy of our faith community, and as we gather in the power of the Spirit, let us turn our hearts toward God. As we encounter God in this time, 
May we be called into community, one with another, joining hands and hearts in the quest to love each other to the glory of God and our neighbor's good. Prayer is a time to connect with God, a time to find ourselves in God's presence, listening and sharing from deep within our hearts. We like to share in prayer in three ways, conversation with our community and sharing joys and gratitudes and concerns and challenges and thinking together how we can support one another. And then we like to be in prayer in music, sharing and listening to that music as it touches our hearts. And then third, we gather together in spoken prayer. So I invite us to begin this time together for you to consider in God's presence what gives you life and what drains that life from you. Take a moment. I invite you to breathe. Breathe in that which gives you life as you have discerned in God's presence and then release that which drains life from you. Breathe it in. Release. In a moment, for now, in God's presence, name a joy in your life. In God's presence, name a sorrow. Breathe in that joy, filling your entire body slowly releasing the sorrow into the earth and into God's presence. Breathing in the joy, releasing the sorrow. I invite you in God's presence to think of a challenge that you and God are working with this week. How does that challenge serve you? Maybe reframe it into what strengths and courage it brings forth in you. Or what curiosity and wonder does it bring for you? Or what bridge needs to be built? And then think about the negative impact that has on your life so that you can release it into God's presence. Breathing in the reframing of that challenge, recognizing the gift of that challenge, releasing all that is negative that no longer serves you in that challenge. Breathe in the gift of the challenge, release the grief of the challenge. Breathing in God's presence, releasing into the world. As we listen to our musical meditation, I invite you to continue to connect with that breath that grounds you, listening and being in dialogue with God, breathing together.
recognizing the nurturing of the music and the communication that you had with God. Will you join me in spoken prayer? God of constancy and stability. God of curiosity and wonder. God of instability and challenge and even God of chaos. All around us, life is changing. Each breath we take, followed by release, we live in the trust that another breath will follow. The constancy of the in and out, the receiving of that which gives us life and the releasing that rhythm brings confidence that life can continue, that you will be with us in whatever comes our way. And yet in that constancy of life and in that consistent rhythm, there always is disruption, God. We have the hiccup that just comes and is irritatingly consistent until our bodies adapt and it's able to move on. There's that sharp intake of breath in pain or surprise. That brings us to newness, to recognition, to wonder, to curiosity. Lord, we have our rituals, those things that order our lives, that we participate in day and night, day after day. And those rituals give our life meaning and order. They're important. And when a grain is plucked and we find ourselves offended because our rituals have been disturbed. May we see divine interruption. May we be curious and wonder if there is mystery in interruption and chaos. Help us, help us wonder if that which offends can also be a gift that brings life and reframed can bring love in our interactions. Help us to be open to change, to be open to reframing and tweaking that which feels comfortable in our world so that others and ourselves may find a way to be whole. Help us examine our resistance to the change you are inviting us to see and be a part of. Seeking to understand how resistance benefits us and can help us intentionally choose to open ourselves to your creative spirit. May our wonder, our resistance, our openness lead to a revolutionary lifestyle that creates spaces for your revolutionary love to come alive, to seep into the world, to blossom into gentle spring flowers of divine transformation. Be near comfort. Be near challenge. Be near so that we are, we are able to know that you are God. Amen. Him. Amen. 
I would enjoy singing with you. I recognize that we can't hear each other, but there is a joy just to be able to sing our praise and our hope and our visions into the universe so that our voices are lifted in worship to God. I invite you to the hymn, New Earth, Heavens New. There are four verses to this. Susan will be playing it and the words will come up on the screen. If you have a hymnal at home, you're invited to turn to page 299 and share together in this act of praise. Susan? Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. We are in chapter 6, and I will be sharing verses 1 to 16. I'm reading from the message, so you will enjoy this uh, contemporary reading. On a certain Sabbath, 
Jesus was walking through a ripe grain field. His disciples were pulling off heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands to get rid of the chaff, the chaff and then eating them. And some Pharisees said, why are you doing that? Breaking a Sabbath law. But Jesus stood up for his disciples. Have you never read what David and those with him did when they were hungry? How David entered the sanctuary and ate fresh bread off the altar. Bread that no one but the priests were allowed to eat. He also handed it out to his companions. Then Jesus said, the son of man is no slave to the Sabbath. He's in charge. On another Sabbath, Jesus went to the meeting place and taught. There was a man there with a crippled right hand. The religious scholars and Pharisees had their eye on Jesus to see if he would heal the man, hoping to catch Jesus in a Sabbath violation. Jesus knew what they were up to and spoke to the man with the crippled hand. Get up, stand here before us. He did. Then Jesus addressed the religious leaders. Let me ask you something. What kind of action suits the Sabbath best? Doing good or doing evil? Helping people or leaving them helpless? He looked around at each one of them, meeting their eye. And he said to the man, hold out your hand. The man held it out and it was as good as new. Everyone was beside themselves with anger and started plotting about how they might get even with Jesus. At about the same time, Jesus climbed a mountain to pray. He was there all night in prayer before God. And the next day, he summoned his disciples and from them, he selected 12 he designated as apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. There's the ending of the sharing of our stories, our biblical stories from Luke today. I was excited this week to hear that many of you are now getting the first shot of the COVID vaccine. There is just a sense of release that moves through us. Just that light, that hope, knowing that the second booster is coming, knowing that it won't change everything and there's still risk. But there is hope. And we begin to realize, I think, that we can never go back to the life we had and loved before COVID hit. Maybe you can remember where you were in March of 2020 when the COVID became a catchword and so important in our lives. And as the COVID vaccine becomes more readily available and the political leadership of our country transitions, in many ways, we can find ourselves in the beginning of something new. 
It feels like over the past several years, we've pushed through and breathed through the challenges that were set in front of us. It almost became a rhythm, didn't it? That rhythm of life, breathing in when we needed that time to regroup as individuals or as a community, to breathe in, to energize, to comfort, to revive, and then breathing out that which no longer served us, changing and, and adapting as we continued forward, releasing the tensions, sometimes releasing the craziness of it all, the anger, the building bitterness. That creating space for breathing and regeneration prepares us for the next push that's needed to move through the challenges and the changes that continually confront us. Pushing onward toward that new space of whatever is held in the future. <laughs> familiar to some of us, remind you of anything? It's the sound of birth, isn't it? Push, breathe, push. Our text this morning traditionally is seen as a text where Jesus names his apostles. It's a text where Jesus claims his power as he pushes against the traditions he values, and in this case, the Sabbath. As he pushes toward a new way of thinking, a new way of framing, a new way of seeing Sabbath. Our text is also a text that is seen as one that demonstrates Jesus' power when Jesus, as a teacher, a person of authority, immediately in front of the religious leaders, asks a question, receives no answer, and moves forward to demonstrate his power over bodies, his power over evil in the healing of the crippled man's hand. These two stories, authority and power, are named. And they begin to push forward to a new way of thinking. A thinking that invites those who follow Jesus to not only consider the value of what they've been taught, the value of their rituals, the value of their tradition, but it invites them to consider that they are stewards of these practices and these institutions given by God. And they have to continually examine those institutions and when the practices and the institutions themselves become more important than the people, it's time to reframe. It's time to reimagine. It is time to re-engage. And these two stories invite us to do just that. They Im invite us to reimagine Sabbath with the people of Jesus' time. Jesus' question goes unanswered. That question of, let me ask you something. What kind of action suits Sabbath best? Doing good or doing evil? Helping people or leaving them helpless? The stories have presented people who are breaking Sabbath law but who are helping others. And Jesus creates a space for us to sit with the implications of those possibilities of choice. 
the implications of that question that invite us to think that the acting or not acting is not the only way to dishonor Sabbath. Harvesting or not harvesting. Choosing not to act in some cases when that choice clearly results in harm or danger for another and dis also dishonors Sabbath. The choice Jesus offers us in honoring Sabbath in these two stories is not between doing something and doing nothing. It's a choice to move forward and move toward the healing and the wholeness of others, individuals and communities. The old brethren saying, for the glory of God and our neighbor's good. Honoring Sabbath is the choice to move forward toward healing. And, and this, my friends, this, these two stories initiate and continue to push forward Jesus' movement. That movement within Judaism that asks for a different way of looking at things. It's a way that values tradition but reforms and values tradition but reframes so that healing and wholeness, shalom, become the focus and not the law. The law is not the focus. Gospel becomes foremost in a thinking. healing, wholeness, individual, communion, community. There is so much in today's world where we can honor Sabbath, bringing forth healing and wholeness to communities around us, to individuals around us. So we listen deeply to what people are feeling and needing. We need to breathe in that love of God and the courage it takes to move in the direction of agape love for all people, including our opponents. We need to breathe and then push forward so that a birthing can take place where traditions and ordinances and laws are valued, but not at the expense of the healing and wholeness of our communities, of our beloved community. Being a midwife in feminist language, being a midwife and co-creating with God we do need to breathe. It's not easy birthing. We need to breathe. We need to, to create spaces and places. What does our future hold as we move out of this cocoon of COVID and this time of challenge as we look at white supremacy as we look at what it means to be white and what our whiteness means for the rest of the world? Can you feel the push? Can you feel the need to push? Our values center in Jesus, our lives center in community, our work centers in reconciliation and moving toward 
a peace with justice, can we boldly move into that future? A future where we open ourselves to wonder, to curiosity, to what can we be? How do we need to be different? What will our future hold? Will we be able to live into the hard choices that we have to make? What will our priorities as a faith community be? What will our priorities as individual Christians be? Are we ready to leave something behind that no longer serves us? Are we ready to reframe something that we hold deeply to reframe it, to bring healing and wholeness for our brothers and our sisters, communities beyond ourselves. What will we risk? How will we deal with resistance? What disruptions will find their way into our movement forward? It is challenging to think about moving forward. Can we choose to follow the teaching of this text? The teaching that tends to the needs of others to do good and preserve life as the criteria for choosing to act differently than before. What do we need to suspend? What do we need to restart? What do we need to continue so much possibility and opportunity before us as we live into that which we hold dear and as we wonder about what can be. We need to reframe moving forward. We need to reframe what actions really break Sabbath rule. The reframing and the tweaking must not must not done must not be done for the harm. And our thinking cannot be for what harm it might bring, but for what healing and what wholeness it might bring. And as we move forward, pushing, pushing to bring that kingdom of God here on earth, always holding in our hearts for the glory of God and our neighbor's good. As we push forward, might we push forward in love? Might we hold the beloved community as a framework for the future? And might we be brave as we create spaces for healing and wholeness in our world, individually, communally, globally, Amen. As we leave this sacred space and this sacred time, ah, may God go with you. May God keep your eyes open, looking for new ways. May God alert you to God's presence in all things. May God alert you to God's invitation to tweak that which needs to be tweaked for the glory of God and our neighbor's good. May the grace of God open your heart to surprises, to wonder, to curiosity, to light and love. Amen. Our Deacon of the Month this month, uh, February, tomorrow's a new month. Our Deacon of the Month this month will be Jay Scala. Feel free to give him a call if you just need someone to talk to. Um, he's available. Uh, his phone number is in the directory uh, and it's also in the 
digital announcements that each of you hopefully receive. If you aren't receiving our digital announcements and would like to, I invite you to go to our webpage, Oasis for Peace, and click on sign up and all of our opportunities for communication are there. Sign up for those which you would like to receive information. As the vaccines uh, arrive and as we um, receive them, I think it's important for us to remember our process for reopening. We are nowhere near reopening at this point, but I know that our worship team will be thinking about this. But there are several things that need to happen. First, we need to come off the purple tier here in San Diego. And that might be happening in a couple of weeks or sooner, I'm not quite sure. But once we come off the purple tier, then the county numbers uh, for the ratios between tests taken and positive tests need to be under or at or under 5% for 14 consecutive days. And then the third is that the board needs to take the vote to open campus. And then there are guidelines in, in place for when that happens and we will be back to worshiping together out of doors um, in the spring. So looking forward, but just wanted to remind you of those guidelines. I'm excited this uh, Friday, today's the 31st, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's February 17th. So it's, it's Wednesday, February 17th. We are having a time with the author, Deborah Perdue. She is the author of, um, let me see if I can find the book here. She is the author of the Grace of Gratitude Journal. It's a P Pinnacle Book Achievement Award winner. She's going to be speaking to us and with us on gratitude, sharing in some exercises on gratitude with us and introducing us to her two books, the meditation, the graduate, the gratitude journal, I'm sorry, the gratitude journal. And then she has 365 days of gratitude. Uh, so we will be sharing in those books. Then once a month for those who would like, we will continue with a time of gratitude and we'll come together and for a half an hour or so, just share the gratitudes or what we've been learning about gratitude. So I look forward to that. The deadline is February 5th. That's why February 5th was in my brain. The deadline's February 5th. The cost is $30. Uh, you will be receiving a mailer light. And again, if not, if you don't receive our mailer light, please feel free to go to oasisforpeace.org uh, and look in the events column, I believe, and there should be information there. We are beginning the Breath of Life circles again this year. The first one is on February 10th. There are one, two, three, four organizations that are collaborating to make these Breath of Life circles possible. Uh, the first one will be on the 10th of February, beginning at 10, concluding at 12. And we are looking at setting intentions for the year. The session is called Our Guiding Star. Registration uh, information is in your announcements. Um, you can do that there. Annual conference pivots from hybrid to totally online this summer. So anyone can register. You could go to uh, brethren.org and backslash AC and the registration and information can be there. Registration opens in March. There's also a link in the digital announcements. Feel free to check that out. Those are all the announcements I have. Just a reminder that if you have gratitudes and um, challenges, concerns that you would like to share beyond this space, you are invited to email gratitudeandchallenges.com at, G, no, I'm sorry, gratitudeandchallenges 
at gmail.com. Oren will view those on Thursday and provide those to everyone on our prayer chain list. Uh, if you would have a prayer request between now and then, feel free to email Oren. He'll be more than happy to receive that prayer request. I pray a blessing on you this week. May you find newness. May you open your eyes to the glory of God and looking for ways to reframe that which you always do reframe it toward the other and the re revolutionary love that God invites us to share. Have a great week. I continue to pray for you as you pray for me. God bless.